her identifying him. The house had been ransacked, but it's difficult to tell uh, what, if anything, was stolen. The last positive sighting we had of Phyllis was at 7.40pm, the night before when she was out walking her dog, as she often did. Some 10 years later, a knife, a G96 brand folding knife, was found in a hedge of a neighbouring house, and this knife has been found to be consistent um, with a possible murder weapon. There's a $200,000 award for any information leading to the conviction of the person or people responsible for her death. Beverly Hanley was a 64-year-old grandmother who, at 3.25pm on the 6th of October 2010, was found dead in her home at 34 Homington Road, Elizabeth North. She'd been attacked in the laundry, um, savagely beaten with a cricket bat and suffered multiple stab wounds. It's clear that Bev fought with her attacker and she had multiple defensive wounds to her body. She was found by her sister and again in this case we believe the motive was theft. Um, on this morning um, we believe that Bev got out of bed, made herself a coffee and toast which was left on the dining room table and was in the process of doing her washing. During the course of the cycle of the washing, the washing machine had been switched off giving the impression that she was interrupted. Importantly, um, a witness heard Bev between that time talking to a male near the back door of her house, who she apparently knew. During the course of that conversation, the voices became elevated and it was clear an argument developed, followed by a scream, some loud thuds, with somebody apparently being struck and then silence fell. Bev's handbag and contents are missing and haven't been recovered. And again, in this case, there's a $200,000 award. At 2.11pm on the 4th of November 2011, Stephen Newton, a 55-year-old invalid pensioner, was found dead in his home at Unit 2, 2A Davidson Street at Mount Gambier. Stephen was found by police after they commenced investigating his disappearance. He was reported missing by the Salvation Army and the Housing Trust, who hadn't seen him for a while. Attending police found um, Stephen's body um, in a room, I won't say which one, but he'd been covered with rubbish and was um, in a state of advanced decomposition. In this case, it's possible that more than one offender may have been present at the time of his death and in any event, it's likely that more than one offender was involved in disposing of property that was stolen from his house. The time of death was most likely in the week leading up to his body being recovered. Again, in this case, um, theft features in the circumstances of the death with a large flat screen TV, whippersnipper, uh, electronic games, DVD and household goods being stolen, most of which were recovered from pawnbrokers at Mount Gambier. A person was arrested and charged with his theft, uh, with the theft of these things at the time, and that person would serve seven months in prison. But there were no other charges in respect to the murder, and a reward is being sought for um, this case. Now, I know you'll ask me about the details of the suspect, and um, I can't, or I'm not willing to disclose too much about that, and certainly won't be identifying this person to you, except to say that it's a man who's now 39 and lives in the Riverland in Victoria. He was known to all three victims and at the time of the deaths lived within about 10 minutes of them. So the investigation and where we're at now, um, the investigation is in full swing at the moment. We have been able to obtain additional forensic evidence and we've obtained other information as a result of the investigation, but it's very much in its infancy. The forensic work and the investigation are progressing well, um, but we've got a lot more work to do. I would thank those people who um, have had the courage to come forward and provide fresh information to us, which has helped us, and I would encourage others with information to do the same. This was a cowardly attack on our grandmothers, on an invalid pensioner. Each attack was extremely brutal and the type of people that commit these offences 
are not worthy of people um, defending. So I would encourage anybody with information um, to think about it, consider their conscience, consider the families of each of the victims and do the right thing now and come forward, whether it be um, fresh information or whether it be adding to information they've provided in the past. It's clear that some people have withheld information and some people have told lies. And some of those people may be scared of this offender. I would encourage them to contact us either directly or through a solicitor and we will help them in relation to their safety and to work through the issues. The important thing is for all these cases to be solved. I'm happy for some questions. No, that related to um, one of the, there's been some forensic, um, I guess, outcomes in relation to a couple of these. I don't want to specify which one, but enough to provide a clear focus and um, make us confident that the same offender was re indeed responsible for all three. It had been suspected in the past, but we're satisfied it is the same offender now. Is the suspect a relative of one of the victims? I won't answer any questions in relation to his identity because I don't want to prejudice any future trials. Is he a threat to the public? Well, anybody who commits this type of offence is a danger to the public. Um, the offender is currently living interstate and we've adlo advised local police of the circumstances of these deaths and the potential risk that that person poses. How far are you? As I say, the investigation is in its infancy. The first four months was a very intensive review of all three cases, um, and then the forensic work um, has been continuing since then. So the investigation has realistically just gone over in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the DNA has been helpful. Are you worried you're going to tip him off now? That perhaps he might have, have started, but you clearly know where he is. We clearly know where he is. He knows that he's been a focus of the investigation for many years. He knows that we're looking at it again now. Um, but we did quite a lot of work that needed to remain confidential in the first four months of the investigation. So we're quite comfortable with him knowing about it now. If you have this new evidence now, why can't you arrest him now? Because these are really difficult investigations. Um, each one of these cases was, was a very thorough and comprehensive investigation in the past um, and again now they're very difficult investigations so we want to do a comprehensive investigation make sure we gather enough evidence so that we can put him before the court um, and secure a conviction to jump in early and arrest him without sufficient evidence and him get off would simply um, expose the public to more risk so just to be clear you suspect that the three cases were linked prior to establishing the task force was it the task force and forensic Yeah, we had suspicions in the past, but we're satisfied with the result of new investigation and some forensic outcomes that it is the same offender now. How hard is it for the families of these victims to have this draw out this long? Uh, all our victims of unsolved cases, it's just terrible for them. I mean, all murders are bad, but each one of these is horrific. Um, and we want to do everything we can to deliver an outcome for the people. It won't make up for their loss, but I'm sure they'll be glad for the person to be made accountable. Do you think there might be more than three victims? Is this possible with other No, there's nothing to indicate other three victims. And um, in this case, we're, we believe that the deaths occurred um, on each occasion during a theft. So the persons that are... Are, are they an opportunist? I'm, I'm curious why they would wait so long uh, between... It's really hard for people with rational minds to try and work out why these people do these things um, in the first place, let alone when they do it. So it's really difficult to answer that. Can you say the person who you arrested over the theft of the equipment is the same person? No, I shouldn't comment on that. But you can't rule out I just won't comment on it. Any more questions, please? How, how worried should the public be that this person is at large? Um, I guess we've, we have people suspected of not just this murder but other murders where there hasn't been sufficient evidence. I mean, we've, we'll do everything we can um, to investigate the murders. We do everything we can to ensure the public's safe. 
Um, we've notified our Victorian colleagues of the circumstances of each of these murders so that they're aware this person's in his community and so he can be monitored. Is he under surveillance, sir? Oh, I wouldn't say that, even if he was. Okay. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.